<clears throat> All right, guys. Jason Reese here with Focus Creative Studio. We're going to get after uh, an oil paint rendering session today and go through this diesel locomotive that I've just uh, jumped back into. Um, it's crazy to think I've got, uh, you know, well over 50 locomotives in a, a PRR roster and I haven't touched weathering or paint on a locomotive for over three years actually um i just had gotten a bunch of stuff done on a previous layout and and then tore that layout down a lot of stuff's in boxes uh as i'm as i'm rolling through new shelf style layout i wanted to have the ability to uh, easily transport modules uh, someday if i move or haul them to a club um, if i wanted to and so that really kind of Put a lot of my painting and weathering on hold for the last couple of years and i'm trying to get back into that now that i'm heavy into the 3d printing side and doing some really cool custom models so today what we're going to do is we're going to roll with the stuart hobbies kit this is ho scale <coughs> excuse me and this is a, a model that i started weathering on uh, a little over a week ago and i'm trying to get through a lot of the i'll spend about an hour today going through the process that I use uh, that follows really Michael Rinaldi's work with Rinaldi Studio Press. Uh, great guy. Met him several years ago up in Portland um, when I was there on vacation. Took took time out to just go sit down and have coffee with him. Just a great guy. And talk about, you know, research and development, weathering of our, our model subjects, and, 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 and how that process translates to all scales. So as an armor modeler, he's really plugged into the 135... 148 scale stuff does a lot of small scale stuff you know too with the the gundam kit world uh, but my focus is uh, model railroads so ho scale predominantly i'll get into some n scale maybe down the road but ho scale is, is kind of my gig so 1 to 87 for those that might be jumping over from armor uh, it, that catch this video so this process here is is light to dark oil paints that I have down here on a palette that the linseed oil has soaked out of into the cardboard gives me more control as I roll into this. This palette's two days old now, so I may have to push and prod a little bit to get some color, but this is basically just these light white cream colors, light, light kind of a tan color, and then some other rust colors. So we're going to get in. This side's done here waiting for me to get wrapped up on handrails, and I might come back and do a little bit more streaking with some rust, but I don't want to go any more over the top. This side just got started, so the the roadmap was there with the light to dark and how we're working from the bottom up with this particular locomotive and reference photos that I have. So we're going to carry this same process over to this side. So what I've done is I started light to dark here just to get into the flow of things, and then I started dropping down you know the white cream coats on this side, and I'll start building up. We'll go ahead and jump in. The first thing I'm going to do is drop the the lighter color up top around the vents somewhere to this side no, no work's been done up here so i'll come back to that um, later as well but we'll go ahead and get rolling here so i'm just going to go ahead and prep my brush get some oil thinner on it mineral spirits i actually let's see i use the mona lisa stuff that you can get at hobby lobby Use the 50% off coupon or grab it on sale. You can usually get it for like nine or 10 bucks, I think. Um, and I've been using this for a little over a year now. So, but I'm just getting some some oil on, or some thinner on the brush that I can come back in and start working with this. I just wanna drop a little bit more dust on the bottom here. And this way you can just, in some cases, see how sloppy the brush work can be because we'll come back in. So this is my wet brush, my color brush. And I'm just going to come in and literally just slopping it on here because it's all going to get pulled up into these radiators. And I'll use a, a, a blending brush. I'll, I'll prep it, get it soaked with thinner, and then wipe a lot of it off. I don't need a whole lot. You really don't need a lot of thinner on the brush. I'll, I'll keep a dry brush as well. But with the first base coat, I like to, to be able to just basically stipple and then pull pull it up and it in black is tough because it doesn't look like you're doing much but you'll see here as this dries that 
that's really altering the, the entire black color here on the loco. So, and that, that little ridge line is a great place for dust to settle, which is why I dropped the paint into there. We're not gonna overdo it. Come back, we can always do more later. But just working some of this color. Gentle brush strokes. And again, I'm just kind of tapping, stipple motion. And that helps draw this color. Get my camera right here. The stippling helps spread that oil and give you some control on pulling it up into the black and across the the grills. We'll come back and, and we'll do kind of a wash technique in the grills, so a little bit wetter brush. But this is just getting us a base coat down here. Make sure we can see this whole time. So you can see that as this starts to dry out, Right in here, you can see that light color is already picking up, and there's just a little bit of actually hit this already, so it's not quite dark. But just that little bit of oil on your brush is enough to discolor and change the, give you a tonal shift across the black for our dust. And I'm using that's a cream oil color. It's one of the better ones I found, actually, because it's not very, it's not very good with its pigment content, and it's. I told Michael, I said, I need a really good dust color. But right now, this one's actually working well over black because it lacks some, some rich pigments like some of the other colors. King Art has a good set out, you know, 24 colors, um, which covers pretty much everything, but there's not like a cream in there, which is what I like to use to, to set that first initial dust layer. So that... You can see I've not soaked the surface, um, and as that dries, we'll get we'll get some of this modeled effect in here, which is what we're after. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't blend out some of this here in the middle. Get a good camera angle so you can see and me see. So right there, maybe. Let's see if I get this way. I'm just trying to push some of this older oils even things out a little bit. Again, just it's this is a soft stipple motion. And I'm just trying to get that overall dust look. And it's okay, like if it, down here you see, uh, I've gotten a little bit aggressive, and so I've, I've actually poked through the dust layer of oils that were there. And it reveals the original manufacturer paint. So that, that's fine, because we'll, we build stuff up in layers, and so that, that can actually represent you know, somebody in the crew coming up and wiping something off here around the panel. And we're gonna, we'll flood this whole thing with some, some color. So the next one we'll roll into is the tan. We're going light to dark. And I work both bottom to top and top to bottom. <clears throat> Small sections at a time. Put this on kind of wet. Let it flow into the panel lines a little bit, like a wash a little bit. Because we've got several layers that are coming on this, so. If I stop talking, I'm, I, I, I got into a groove, so bear with me. Now, a lot of this is going to come off as part of the wet process. I, I tend to work a little bit wetter. And the reason for that, for me, is that, I, I, and this is just kind of a time behind the brush thing, is that I like the effect that I can get when it's not quite so dry and, and pushing down and getting some of this. You can see the stipples and almost like it's just rained and, that you know, or a light rain has come through and, and dabbed on that. The water has gotten through a little bit of the, the surface 
dust and revealed some of the, the original paint below or the layer of grime below. So that's why I tend to go a little bit wetter. Now, in fairness, the, the hurdle that you run into is tide marks. So, but we can we can work through those with the subsequent layers, but you can kind of see that this is, is much a much wetter application than what I was just doing on the light cream is our base layer. And I'll come in and I'm, I'm, I'm pushing with my blending brush, I'm pushing down on the paint in a stippling motion so that I'm trying to get that top down look instead of drawing down across the locomotive. And what I mean by that is, is taking a, a flat brush because I'll, I'll use this technique too, but taking a flat brush and pulling down through to streak it. I'm avoiding the streak piece at this time because really all I'm trying to do is, is push, push and blend and get a subtle effect with this tan oil. just a little bit more thinner on there because I want to pull some more of this oil off that's getting up a little high. That's the great thing about oils is it's, its workability really gives you a whole lot more control than acrylics do. Some people just don't want to do oils. This, these don't take forever to dry. You get too much on there, you can generally pull a little bit thinner on the brush. You can pull a lot of it off. Depending on how aggressive you get with the brush and, and, and pushing those colors back down in. So, <clears throat> you can see that that brush is just kind of shifting and pushing. Out to the edge of this raised panel here. Let's see if I can. And you can see we've gotten rid of a lot of it, but now we've got this second layer in here. It's built up on top of our original, and we're leaving a lot of it there at the base because that's really where the dust is. So if we flip it over. Same thing, I'm doing kind of this U-shaped motion in the panels so that dust can start creeping up, but then we leave this nice, dirty, grimy dust layer at the bottom. Because we don't, I don't need to totally wreck the locomotive. We just want wear and tear. Mid, late 60s, transition era, Pensy to Penn Central. You know, budget's gone. And so, you know, the things that, that take a hit first are gonna be cleanliness of a locomotive. And then maintenance will start to follow, follow after that. Um, but the cleanliness is going to be the first to go. They're, just, they're going to cut the cost. And so this is an argument I've, I've been making with, with Pensy Modeler. Says you guys are getting all bent out of shape about what color dark lo locomotive green is. The reality of it is, is the only color, the only time it's ever that color is coming out of the shop. So I, granted, we need to get close, but we can tonal shift and do some things with our weathering that allow us to make that kind of a moot point on what exact color these locomotives are. I'm good with dark green. I'm good with black. Doesn't matter to me. I'm not trying to create historical pieces. If I ever get to that, I guess I'm going to have to be a little bit more diligent. But until then, I'm good. So you can see where this is going. So I'll stay on this side for a little bit. Now I'm going, to, this is a, I don't know the exact color. I'll put the colors of all the oils in the description. This is kind of a mustard yellow. So this is our first light rust stage before we get into any of this dark work. And again, I'm not, we don't need to do a whole lot here. So just in the areas where we're going to start looking at some rust, which will be the hinge area between the panel joints. 
Some areas are good to hit it more than others. So we go light to dark and then we're good and hitting the bottom again. Blending brush. Now this one, I'm actually gonna pull down along the side because we just wanna start pulling some of that color down. We don't need all of it. We just want a little bit to shift some tones in our, our dust color. This got a little wet, but we'll, I, think we can, I think we can clean all this up. Just brushing top to bottom. Maybe let the bottom of this get rusty because I've got a, a panel box step that sits in here. Let's see if I can. Just streaking these down through. I don't want a whole bunch on, on the panels. Once these dry up a little bit, I can jump into that panel edge and tone that down a little bit. Okay. Don't freak out about the bright yellow. It's just the base layer here. Keep Pulling it off the panel. It's kind of cool that it blends down over the, the paint of the Pensy. All I'm trying to do is get it into that joint a little bit more. It's okay if it's on some of the panels, but we don't want it to be a dominant color up on the panel face. Oops, sorry about that. The camera's right above me here. Same technique I was using with the cream. I'm just kind of stippling to push that, that, that oil to the edge of the panel and into that, 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 ed, that raised edge is all I'm doing. Now down below here, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't I'm going, basically I'm pushing over that raised edge, which is kind of burnishing, for lack of a better description, this lower edge here, which is right against the, the walk, the walk deck. And I don't, I don't need this to be overly rusted. We're going to, it's going to go darker. So we're burnishing this bottom edge and creating kind of a, a you know, a worn look as we do that. But you can start to see now that it's, <clears throat> it's starting to to work its way through all the layers of oil. And so I'm like, so now I need to move on because I, I've gone a little bit too hard on that specific area. That's okay, oils, we can fix all that. All right, so next one we jump up into <coughs> will be the, I think this is Burnt Sienna. The end all be all of rust colors for Oil paint running, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber. You don't have those, you gotta have them. It's time to get them. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll just drop a little bit of this color in. And this is just literally, we're, we're putting drops in, painting drops. I don't want it overly crazy because we're gonna pull these down through this yellow. So if we if we if we overload it, it's, we'll have a hard time keeping things clean. So I don't want to do that. This one, this one we can get a little heavy with because we're assuming that water's coming down 
getting caught in between panels. And then the bottom of this we'll go ahead and hit. I love the translucency that we can get with more thinner, less thinner with oils. Start laying in some, some areas here that shift the color tone a little bit. All right, back to blending. I'll grab a dry blending brush this time. <coughs> Excuse me. Just so that I'm, it, clean dry bl burning, blending brush as we jump between colors here. So I'll, then I'll just kind of gently, may not, may not grab, may have to get, yeah, I have to go back to the wet one. I set my other brush at. But now as we pull down through, you'll see that it, we're gonna start getting these color color shifts. So it starts changing our yellow into a rusty orange. Our yellow is not quite as bright. You don't want these tide marks to get away from you. I just, I like to, with the blending brush, get in there and clean that that tide mark up because basically you've got just a little bit of oil left on your brush it starts to bleed out across the panel which I when you're doing you know rust scheme it's like the very first surface layers of rust that start appearing when 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 maintenance hasn't been done now what what I'm not gonna do on this locomotive is get into trying to overly fade any of the the printed on lettering work of Pensy. I'll let I'll let some of the weathering go ahead and shift those values a little bit, but I'm not I'm not gonna get into trying to to bleed all these letters. Some sometimes we do too much. Alright. That one got away from me. I'm gonna have to come back and fix that one. That's okay. This is a hurdle of not having everything dry completely between. So that, that's my fault. But I can come back with dust over the top of it. It's, it's just creating another layer, it's no big deal. I need to be I need to get better about the control side of that piece. Hit it with a hairdryer real quick. The online dilemma of putting videos together is that yeah, sometimes I get a little a little carried away with getting a process done in a shorter amount of time frame than it might normally take. Not good. Because then I have to go back and fix stuff. But that's okay. A general rule of thumb, you want things fully dried and set before you jump into the next layer, or Things are gonna get messed up. <clears throat> but knowing that things are a little bit wet, now I can come back with my angled brush and lightly, let's see if I can do this here. Pushing some of that oil, again, back down, which gives it, you know, kind of a modeled pattern. If I can get closer. A little bit less dust on this side than what I've got on this side. It's going to be a little bit 
grimier here and then I'll, I'll fade out and do much less dust on this end as I get towards the front of the locomotive. This is the area here in the middle on both sides where I've got a little bit more grime going. So just trying to, to give a little bit obviously different effect on each side. Oops, sorry. Hair dryer. Okay. All right, so we'll come back. Let's add a little, let's go back light again. I know, I know, this is one, this is not like the dark, but this is the beauty of layering with oils. So we're gonna come back, clean, clean these spots up a little bit with some tan. Because dust doesn't not come back over our rust anyway. I mean, it's picking a point in time that you've chosen to to represent with your model and, and being intentional about it instead of just, oh, I'm just gonna flood the surface with a color. So it got a little away from us there at the corner. We're gonna blend that one. Got a little away from us here. Let's drop a little bit of dust back in here. Not a lot. Make sure my brush is fairly dry. And then just gently. See, make sure. Make sure it's gonna. Again, much brighter on the screen, but but as we come back over, this will get uh, dark oils added to it. We're just kind of we're kind of fixing this little these little bitty areas that went a little bit too far through. It's kind of like uh, when you're chipping, knowing when to walk away. And again, I'm not a professional painter. This I don't do this every day. I don't. I'm just a I'm a rookie learning from the techniques of others. All right, now, I've got all this on there, and we're gonna see what happens when I use the, the streaking through technique. So I've got my flat brush, loading it up with oil, then wiping most of that oil off, and then just lightly top to bottom. on everything one direction like rain is washing down the face of that. It's very very lightly hitting the the locomotive here. And you start to see some of the <clears throat> Some of the nice color variation we're getting at the bottom. We haven't even really gone dark in here yet. All right, so next one. I think this one is raw umber. Beat this up a little bit. All right, got to get this one rolling. Give me a second. So I, I usually, these usually last two or three, sometimes four days. I don't do anything with them. I don't, I don't put them in the refrigerator. I don't freeze them. I don't cover them. I just, the tubes of oil paint literally last so long that I'm good with just rolling with whatever, however long they last. So if I do one oil paint session a week, you know, I'll get a couple of days worth of modeling out of it. 
these spots here on the hinges. A little bit more oil in this one. Make this a little bit more like a wash in here. That dark, make that, we're gonna make that panel really pop off a little bit. Just hitting the hinges this time. Just a little bit maybe in here. To my blending brush. Dragging top to bottom down across that. Haven't added any rust up into the the handrail bolts just yet, where the handrail stanchions go. Again, just light light tapping, pushing the oils around a little bit. Check on the other side. Yep, 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 yep. A little bit more aggressive over here. That's that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna add some of this darker. Again, there's a step box that goes in front of this, so I don't have to be overly careful. I just light stipple to get that dust to shift a little bit. All I'm trying to do is really pop that panel up off the model so that when, I, when that step goes in and I do dust and, and grime on the step, the two having done, been done separately still follow the same vocabulary. So just a slight shift there from the lighter color. You see just a little bit there in the, the darker along that edge. That's what I'm shooting for. So still need to clean this edge up. That is not, not working with what I want. So let me come back and see if I can't slow down a little bit get the color in there that I need see if I can fix a mistake right here on this video so I'm gonna start with the cream 
drop that in there. This is a completely dry blending brush at this point. I'm barely, barely, barely tapping that surface. I wonder if there's something in the... the finish there. It's covering, but I'm probably gonna have to let this one dry completely to fix that. So, all right, let's come back up to the top. We'll get away from the bottom for a little bit, let it dry. Let me hit it with hair dryer real quick. Set that. Let's see. We'll get uh, work, work a little bit of a wash. All right. So I'll come back to my flat brush. Soak it. We're not going to flood the model, but we're going to we're going to lightly cover it. All those oils below still be excuse me still be there. Just give us a little bit to work with as we as we start flooding into the the grills. Just a little bit of color. So we're going to load a little bit extra. Thinner into the brush and just tap. Capillary action carried in there. It's not, not some crazy rocket science recipe. We're just trying to, we're touching similar to what I've done with the mortar. And we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of this pulled back out, which is why I'm good, you know, shifting from the lighter to the darker. And then if I come back over it, I can pull some of that out with a dry blending brush, just to make sure that we're not overly saturated in those louvers. Just want just enough in there as we get into blending here in a second give them a little life okay so you can kind of see what I have left and then I'll try and like I did with top down I'll try and work a little bit outside to inside so that we push the oils into those louvers and you'll see I'll pull a lot of it out and I'm okay with that because just want just a touch in there And what I'm really wanting to make sure is that I don't have that hard edge I just got rid of there and that you start to see here. I don't want any hard edges of the cream color. I got a little hard edge right there, so I'll blend this out a little bit. A hard edge on this back side. And I'm just kind of pushing, stippling right down along the edge of that to eliminate the hard edges is all I'm doing. When I say hard edges, the hard edges of the oil paint and a, a tide mark that was created from us just dropping those <clears throat> washes on there. I'm going to go ahead and I didn't do a whole lot of extra dust on this side, but I can come back and add that. I'm going to go ahead and add in just a little bit more dust into that layer above that ledge. Just a little. And push that around. One more. Definitely want to make sure I get a little bit more around my handrail stanchions. We're going to roll into that next. All 
Oh, come on, camera. I hope it's not doing that the whole time. I need to be doing it so that I'm a little bit lower with the brush. And see how as it dries out, it start it, to really pick up a lot of the, the dust. So we'll need to shift that with our cream and our tan so that it's consistent all the way up. I am trying to use this top edge at the round over here as kind of my transition point so that I can easily work from the top down. I cr started creating that with what we're going to do here. So this will be kind of a pattern that I use across the top. I still have to set my one of my stacks on this, um, but you can see we're getting quite a bit of variation already. All right, so next one is our tan. I'm just gonna set this above that bridge. Let me dry and set this. So I don't make the same mistake again of pushing through. All right, let's see here if I can, good camera angle. Beauty of oils. I can put up. Oh, uh, big mistake. Up. Oh, big mistake. That's all right. We'll work that out. You're gonna see the the oils. This is hard trying. I'm, I'm trying to paint so that the focus doesn't screw up. Not obviously not. It's a whole lot easier if I'm not trying to do something on camera. <laughs> but that's the point of doing this is so that I can show others how how it works. But I'm gonna hit this one right away. Just using thinner to, to immediately push that down onto the top of that ridge. We're going to blend this out with our blending brush. Might leave this one to be overly rusty. Overly rusty stanchion. Off camera, off camera. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing, pushing this down kind of into the top of that ledge and then pulling.
All right, so now I'm back to my flat brush. Pull all that streaking down like it's been coming from the top down and then we're gonna do the reverse here in a second. Because what I'm trying to do is make sure I've thinned it out enough that I'm not overly covered because we got a little carried away with a couple of those uh, drops that I put on. <clears throat> so I'm trying to back things back down, give us a, a palette to work with from a top to bottom here in a second. All right, so now we're good. So now I can come back <clears throat> and and with with where this color is at, now what I want to do is come from top down with that light brush stroke, a little bit heavier at the top, light as you get to the bottom so that it's we're creating that effect of water rushes over the top, you know, when it's raining and everything settles along that ridge. And I'll only hit the areas around the stanchions with the, the light rust color like I did on this side. But we can hit the, kind of the dark darker areas here a little bit more or the the lighter tan areas here just a little bit more aggressively with the brush so that we're really pulling just that the, this dust layer into that into that top of that ledge so that's that's getting us pretty close to where I'm, I'm kind of final want to be I need to blend blend this one out over here a little bit better see this that, that not good but again blending brush I'm just coming in and pushing that color out away from those and again it's a little bit tough to see on black but might might actually show up on camera because the contrast gets so high. But you can kind of see right here. It's a little heavy, still a little heavy in here. So I'm just trying to let, let that thinner work the oil a little bit and then push it out so that we're blending it out into the adjacent color. Not as critical here. I just want to show how, how we can blend it out because this is all going to get treated similar to this side you know but this one I'd like to blend out a little bit a little bit more and, and as you're tapping basically it's just dropping light colors of oil as in a kind of a modeled pattern that helps with the blending okay I'm a little bit more aggressive with the brush, trying to pull some of it completely off the model. And then right back to stippling. Because the brush pattern itself leaves, it's leaving marks on the locomotive face. So, you know, just this little stippling motion helps create that random modeled look, which is what, which is what I'm after. So, all right. So super, super cool, heavy stuff going on in here. Um, I'm liking where the most of the the dust patterns going. I need to I need to tan this up along the bottom. I like the top, you know, given that it's got a nice strong dust presence. So now I'm going to drop in my my rusty color in my holes. And I literally, when I do stanchions, I like to do them with the railings off. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to come in, brush inside the hole, swirl, swirl. Because all I want is a little bit right, right at the hole. I don't need to get overly aggressive with, you know, going a centimeter out every side and 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 creating unrealistic rust patterns. Not helpful. Does, I don't think it looks good on the models. I, I stay away from making comments, but you know, a lot of people I like to apply lots of rust get it looks cool 
But in this case, what we're trying to do is just blend it out into the adjacent tan, like it's been rusting. So you can see there, been rusting. I'm here in the middle. And it's starting to bleed into the dust layer. That's all I'm, all I'm after here and how this gets. I need to not worry about me on the camera and just go to a desktop focused video process potentially. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push a little bit of that color up into the, the surrounding area. A little bit into the louver just shifts the the tone of the locomotive overall a little bit i kind of like how it you know creates a just a shift in the the dust tone the the the, uh, the locomotive black tone I'm, I'm good with making that shift this i need to find out which which oil this one is it's aggressive i'm, I'm watching it happen on the locomotive so it's not something with the locomotive it's in this particular oil um i need to find out which one that is but it's, it's actually going right down through the layers below. Which I don't recall happening on this side. I wonder if I was a little bit lighter. And you know why I let that other side dry. That's why. A little bit of shift here. Just, it's just, a, just enough to... To draw your eye to you know these patterns that get created with the brush strokes of working through the oils and again I know not everybody's cup of tea I, I like working with oil paints I think it's kind of a cool process I think it gives us just some some great results and then I still got a little bit of that color on my brush I don't know if it'll pick up that shift or not but just a little bit there. All right, let's get rid of all this stuff. Been at it for almost an hour. So, here's where you're at. Okay, this is where we were at. This is where I started. Here, let me do this. <clears throat> get this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> all right, so this is where, this is where things started last week creating that the pattern mimicking the same thing on this side a week later and this is good to go hope you guys enjoyed it leave your comments below